You're watching the Coach McBaron TV show. Welcome back, Coach. We talked earlier about a three-game win streak starting it off with uh, USF on Wednesday night, but you go back, Wichita State and ECU, a big road game against Wichita State, a home win against ECU. You guys have to be feeling pretty good because you're about to get in the middle part of conference. Here. We are. We're not playing perfect by any means, but um, we were we were really shook by that last to Tulsa. I mean, that one really got us. And so I think we came back with a little bit of a renewed focus. I think that um, we found three scores that we can rely upon. We're getting good contributions from people other than those three. Those three being Taylor Barnes, Elena Davis, and Jamira Schutz. They're pretty consistent for us offensively. I think Jazz Herndon is really starting to find her way. She's starting to get to the rim and make some layups. She's starting to control her turnovers a little bit. And she's also starting to uh, assist. And so she's been a real big factor. You see Kiana Coomber in the game here against Wichita State. She had a big game. Jasmine James had a really big rebounding game against Wichita State. But we hit a little lull in the third quarter and, um, and had to find our way out of it. Again, I mentioned that USF, we kind of got that look in our eye when we couldn't, we couldn't find any answers. But, uh, but in this game, we finally found some answers. You'll, you'll see it here in the, uh, in the highlights here in a little bit, and I'll point it out. But um, we finally, finally found a solution to their, to their zone defense, their trapping defense, and then, and then the floodgates opened, and we, I think we went on a 16-4 run. Elena Davis put the team on her back with 26 points, five rebounds, and she's figuring out now that she can get her points at the free throw line. Absolutely. She, I said she could have scored 40 that night. Um, she was really frustrated. I think she was one of seven in the first half. But in the second half, she found the bucket and, and also found the free throw line. Jada Stinson came back with some threes then as well. Critical points for us. That was a 71-50 win at Wichita State. Again, as you mentioned, you came off the Tulsa game. Things got tied after you, you had that lead at Tulsa. They did again at Wichita State, but you told the team in the huddle, not this time. Not this time. And, and they made that decision. Um, we talk a lot with our team about player-led teams, and that's why I bring this up, because that's, that's been something that we've been missing. Um, but the team decided in the huddle, you know, with a lot of encouragement from the coaches, but the team decided in the huddle that enough was enough. And we just had to find a way to get one bucket, and then, like I said, flood the gates open. Then back home in a defensive battle with East Carolina, and you really laid down the defense on ECU. We did, and I'll tell you what, in, in our last three games, opponents have not shot better than 37% against us. I already mentioned three games under 50 points, but we're starting to get really stingy, and when we do that, um, we're, we're hard to score against. The one thing we're trying to tidy up a little bit more is our, is our boxing out, because we are giving out up a significant number of offensive rebounds. We've got we've to get that in check. Taylor Barnes, 18 points against the Pirates. You also had Jamira shoots another nice game of 16. 18, 16, and 11. Anytime we get that from the scores and kind of boost our scoring a little bit. Um, again, contributions from some other people as well, like Jazz Herndon, Keanu Coomer, Jada Stinson. You know, those points are critical to us. We saw in this game, you see Rudy right there getting a bucket. We haven't seen a lot from her lately, but she's starting to get a little bit more comfortable, and we we're able to get some things from her as well. And then, of course, in that game, um, Asia Jones makes her debut, right. which I have to mention because we've been waiting four years to watch this young lady play. She's not anywhere close to where she's going to be in another month, but it was good to get her on the court. She gets, she touches the ball the first time, gets her first bucket, and we're hoping that we can see a lot more from her, um, particularly on the offensive end. As a coach, I know you're going to want to see the scoring prowess of Asia Jones, but you had to be most proud as any coach for her to get in there and take a charge. Just happy for her. Yeah. I'm happy to see her on the court. <laughs> Happy to see her first bucket go in. Happy to see her take a charge. Happy to see her just get some minutes. I mean, we've been waiting a long time, and, and she's been through three surgeries and um, in some off-the-court life things that have been difficult for her. So I'm just really happy to see her be able to get back on the court. But I'll tell you what, before the season's over with, she's going to be effective for it. And you played it very well. She got seven minutes, was able to do something positive, get her off the floor and a win. Absolutely. I don't want her to get fatigued and, and, and any chance of getting hurt again. But more importantly, even than that, was that we got two wins in a row. We established ourselves again on the defensive end of the floor and, uh, and took it right into South Florida.
That is three in a row now for the Tigers. So when we come back, Dave Ocean sits down with associate head coach Amy Stevens. It comes your way. You're watching the Melissa McFerrin Show.